Welcome to the new episode of QGP. I'm Zach Tussing, joined by the fabulous Charles Fillmore, and we're going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch online service that they just revealed. Um, the Nintendo Switch first ever voice chat headset, um, and also the ARMS test punch that we participated in. And that little Pokemon Direct thing that happened. The, yeah, the small, the small little Direct. Yeah. Uh, so to kick things off with the ARMS test punch, uh, yeah, uh, do, I feel, have a feeling you probably got a chance to play more of this than I did. I only got to play the first session. Of, like, the first week? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I played three sessions, so I had a little bit more experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what were uh, your well, thoughts on it? Um, I, I really enjoyed, uh, get, like, really getting into the, the motions of it. Um, like, if you could have seen me, I was, like, really... Like really getting into the moves and uh, were you standing uh, just, up or sitting? Yeah, yeah, I was standing up. Okay. Um, and I don't know. It just really, it really sucked me in, and like I, I was excited for each match to begin. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I, I liked the first like one-on-one match, and I was like, yeah, this is so cool! Wow. Um, and then it did like the um, the, it did like the the two-on-two team match. Um, yeah, where you're and, tethered together. To the other yeah, player. That, that was kind of weird, but I think it, it worked. Um, that's kind of where like I started to have like problems, and then it went into like the the one on one. But there are three. That and shouldn't be that, a mode. <laughs> it shouldn't be a mode. It was very, it was very confusing. Like because like you're you're individually targeting, like things automatically. The game automatically would target an opponent, and right. when you have three people. That means that one person is always having two people yeah. punching at them, and you can't block from the rear. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and n- n- not to mention that there's no documentation. Uh, like there, when you first start, there's like a little tutorial. Mm-hmm. Uh, it gives you the basics of gameplay, but it doesn't tell you how to switch targets. So I could I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to target like the person who was punching me. Yeah, it took me about 45 minutes of playing it, and I found out it was the Y button on the right Joy-Con. But that's something yeah. that like they shouldn't put the, the fans through, trying this out for the first time. Right. I, I assumed it was all going to be one-on-one matches. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I thought, what, thought was going to happen as well. I also didn't expect uh, seven fighters. I was thinking, like, the first five... But they actually gave a good variety. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I got to try out uh, Springman and Ribbon Girl, um, and then I think I had I had to stop playing before I was able to get much farther into it. Okay. Um, so like for the test punch themselves, I played. I <laughs> I did try Helix, and mm-hmm. at I uh, training is much better with with Helix. I got I got a little better with him. He's a bit hard to use at first because his jump doesn't actually make him jump. He just stretches upward, and then you can mm-hmm. dodge that way. But if you don't know that's what's going going to happen, it's a uh, it's a bit jarring. And then you have to press the button a second time to actually jump. Okay. Um, all I, all I can think about is the uh, <laughs> please retweet episode right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, definitely, definitely check out that su- that series. Oh, it's uh, so good. That's Polygon dot com. Uh, it's called Please Retweet, um, and they have him. He, he, he gosh, like, this is cross promotion, I guess. <laughs> um, but it, it's it's just a f- fantastic series about trying to get Nintendo to retweet a very good picture of Toad. They're so close right now. <laughs> um, but he uh, he mentioned mentioned Helix. <laughs> yeah, and uh, pointed yeah, well, out those very, very, very pink lips. <laughs> um, but for the most part, I played as Min Min mm-hmm. because I knew from the first trailer it was like, yeah, that's going to be my character. 
Oh, so. I d- yeah, I did get to do Min Min. I liked the uh, the dragon, the the one that kind of it, it like stops for a bit and then shoots a laser. Yeah, yeah, because that's a, tried that, that makes one a out. great distraction when you pair that with a ram ram, which you can like mm-hmm. curve around and hit them while they're like trying to block that one attack. So. Yeah. Yeah, that, I found that combination to be my favorite, at least for the time being. Mm-hmm. And I noticed, like, because I played three different sessions, um, and I noticed each session people got a lot better. <laughs> right. Because, uh, like, the first hour, I didn't lose a single one-on-one match. It was close. One of the matches was really close. I don't mm-hmm. know how I survived it. But, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't, like, because I'd watched all the footage... I was actually like decent when I first started, but right. then I like plateaued really quickly, <laughs> and then everyone else started getting a lot better. So um, I wasn't expecting volleyball to be in there though. I didn't. Um, so I didn't actually get to do any of the other modes other than the the, the those three matches. Oh okay. So, yeah, so um, volleyball's fun. It's not. It's not going to like keep you playing the game, like the the fighting is, but. Mm-hmm. It's it's a nice side mode. They they didn't have hoops available, but yeah, um, hoops looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, I don't like. It's just very amusing to watch one th- player like throwing the other through the basket. Mm-hmm. Um, did you try using a traditional controller, or just the motion controls? Um, I just tried the motion controls. I didn't get a chance to, to set up anything else. Okay. Because from what I hear, like, the community is pretty split on, like, people who use motion controls and using traditional controls. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I did, uh, I was going to try the, that, the exploit method of, of setting things up, where mm-hmm. you, you basically create a fake network to, that it can't connect to so you you can train in the lobby yeah um and like i kind of got a chance to move around for a couple of seconds before it kept kicking me out so i don't know if i set it up right hmm yeah because i've used that exploit and i've been able to try every character and arms combo um as well Mm -hmm. as like using a traditional controller which is stuff like i didn't want to experiment during the hour sessions right so, um, that, I think that's a pretty good segue into the online Nintendo Switch Online, which is the officially yeah. named service. Nintendo Switch Online. Um, so catchy. It's, it's pretty straight and for, straight to the point. I think the name. Yeah. Um, so it's, not, it's actually like, been Xbox delayed. Live or yeah. Uh, it's actually been delayed into 2018. They don't have a date yet. Uh, mm-hmm. Just sometime in 2018. And which means for us, though, we, we do get free internet for a while, free online yes. play for longer. So that's uh, the, good. Yeah, that is good. The app is delayed with it. So uh, there will be a stripped down free version of the app that will be available this summer. I'm assuming when Splatoon launches because that game really needs it. I, I mean, I certainly hope that it. Well, I think we'll get well, this. This kind of goes into our next topic, um, but I I think it's definitely going to come out in time for Splatoon. Yeah. Um, Um, And then they announced that, like, they're going to have the, like, classic titles available, which they had already talked about, but they were going to say that, they had said that you lost those titles at the end of each month because they, like, gave you different ones. And mm -hmm. what they're saying now is you get to keep these as long as you're paying for the service which is what every right. other company does that's uh i know playstation plus because I, I thought it worked differently because i didn't have it for very long mm-hmm. um but i think you explained it to me that um like they're still tied to your account but you get access to them as long as you have uh access to playstation plus yeah so like right now i i'm not paying for that service because i don't have enough games that i'm actively playing online uh, mm-hmm. But so I've kept all the games that I downloaded from PlayStation Plus. I can't actively play them, but if I were to resubscribe, I'd be able to have access to them all over again. So right. it's going to be the same thing with this, except they're NES games, which I already own, own all of these. 
<laughs> right, but I think the draw here uh, is that uh, it, it sounds as though they're going to work on these games so that um, there's some sort of online functionality with them. So, like, player two can join in from, like, a whole other country. Well, they haven't announced what that is. It could just be leaderboards. I really hope you're right, and it is, like, um, like player two from, from you know, somewhere else. But Your, your good friend from Sweden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, they, haven't, they haven't said what that online play is. Right. And that's kind of the, one of the more frustrating things, uh, specifically with regards to the virtual console, um, is just how silent they've been on the whole thing. Yeah, it's it's it is infuriating because like they they made a statement that said that this these classic games that you get through Nintendo Switch Online is not replacing Virtual Console, mm-hmm. but they didn't make any other announcements. Right. So thanks, Nintendo. Yeah, thanks for the vague promise of maybe something. Yeah. While you're like, at I it, do you want to make another uh, Metroid <laughs> uh, <laughs> j- hint in there? A little tease. Yeah. Um I don't like I the the way that it's it's worded though, I think that they're I don't think that this is going to be uh a replacement for the virtual console. I think that you get access to these special versions of classic games that you can play online with your friends. Um but then there will be the regular virtual console titles. So like you could get Mario three uh, with the online service, and you can play with your friend, um, or you could just get like the regular version on, off the eShop, um, and you can only do that locally. Yeah. It would still be nice to have some kind of statement. <laughs> yeah, just something to go off of, but right now, we've at best, we've got like vaguest hints. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of online, the Nintendo Switch voice chat. So this is from Hori, which is a third-party... But it was it is officially licensed by Nintendo because it is a mm-hmm. Splatoon headset. Uh, right now, it is currently only available in Japan. But I think it's the diagram of how you use it that has freaked out the entire internet, and with somewhat good reason. <laughs> yeah. So this, it, from what it looks like, there you have the headset, um, and then the headset plugs into this block, which plugs into the Switch and your phone. Yes. It's like a so, it's a squid block. Squid shaped block. Yeah. And I think I think this is uh the strongest like the shape of the block is the strongest indicator that it's going to be out in time for Splatoon. Yeah. Um at least at least in the States. Um But it's I don't know. Like it kind of makes sense because I don't think the Switch has um any sort of regular Bluetooth connectivity. Although not yet. Um, I mean, not, hopefully, sometime not yet. in the I future. Mean, it, it, it connects to the Joy-Con somehow, and the Joy-Con can connect to other Bluetooth-enabled devices, like I've done it yeah. before. Uh, it connects via magic, I think. Yes, n- Nintendo, Nintendo magic. Yeah, you get, like, Miyamoto in there and just, like, sprinkle some pixie dust over the yeah, Switch. Yeah, there's a little, little, little twinkle in Reggie's eye, and, <laughs> and just boom, snaps you're his connected. fingers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also hearing that the cords are fairly short, mm-hmm. which is awful, because like this is already a mess of cables. Right. So. Yeah, not not yeah. quite sure what to think about this yet. Yeah, and it's because I don't think. I, here, here's the other thing. Um, like, what if this works fine if you if you're playing on on handheld mode? Because you have the system right there in your hands. You know, the length of the cords isn't really an issue. Yeah. But it starts to become an issue if you're playing locally or if you're playing on your TV. Because you have to sit a little farther from your console and then, like, you don't have as many ports. Like, you, your friend needs to have be able to listen as well. Um, yeah. So, I, 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 don't, I really don't know about this. I feel like just, like, a, a regular Bluetooth headset would have been better than this like I get that um like I kind of understand the flow uh, of being able to hear um game audio and voice chat so like I understand the the reason 
like you would connect your phone through this block like that that's how you you combine the signals i guess but it's it's still i still really feel like they could have they could have done this a little bit better yeah i mean like when since you're already bringing your phone into it you could just use you know one of the numerous you know voice chat apps right for instance skype <laughs> <laughs> yeah or or discord or yeah. I mean, they're like or just even call them i don't know yeah like you have you you're literally using your telephone yeah to talk to someone um yeah i mean I, I sort of feel like that's going to be that that is going to become a thing like there're going to be people who find workarounds for this cuz it is kind of ridiculous the only thing i can think of like the reasoning behind this is that you can't have a bluetooth device connect to two sources at the same time so like the headset wouldn't be able to connect to the switch and your phone but like couldn't you just have like put an add-on receiver for that with a specific signal so like what if you you plug your phone into the switch and then your phone generated a signal that the headset picked up on like then something like leave, that like you just <laughs> and then you leave your phone sitting next to the console and you're good to go you could connect multiple headsets to it i think we just figured out a better <laughs> method oh well mm, you might need like a special like receiver or something but you're so, already paying uh, for this headset device i right. mean i don't know how much this is but is it yeah. is it going to be be uh is it going to be a premium like the joycon itself or the dock i'm, I'm not sure I think speaking like, of that, why is the dock so expensive? Like it's like people have taken it apart, and it's literally just like a couple of pe like components that let the switch move, like display on the TV. Yeah, it's it's not like there's some extra GPU hidden in there. No, it's literally just like it just converts the signal. And now that you've started using it, like the the thing is a piece of junk. Like it's it's honestly the thing I like the least about the switch. It's just like I mean, it feels. I, it feels flimsy. I like the look of it. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I do like kind of sliding it in, into, into position. So it, like, it feels, it feels good to put it in the dock. Yeah. Um, I just but, meant like it's build quality. Yeah. Build quality. It's, it's just, pla it's, it's all plastic and it's like, why, why is this $90? So yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if the headset itself is like 70 or something. I mean, the Joy-Cons are, are 80, but I mean, part of that's yeah. because they put in the HD rumble and IR sensor. You know what's weird? The Joy-Cons themselves are more expensive than the Pro Controller. That's kind of like, I don't know, that's, I guess because like the... That seems backwards. The Pro Controller doesn't have the IR sensor. Okay, okay so I, don't, I, <laughs> I guess the IR sensors are $10. Because so, you can't play that, that one 1-2 that one, one, Switch minigame without it. The sandwich yeah, the game. The only game in existence that uses that function. Uh, somewhere down the line, I feel like we're going to get a WarioWare game that'll like use all of these features, but mm -hmm. it, it still, to me, does not feel worth like whatever extra we're paying for that IR sensor. Right. I don't know. I feel like I feel like a game like WarioWare needs to come along that can showcase, uh, so that can like show developers. Hey, here's a way you could use this. I don't think One Two Switch really does that. Yeah, or Nintendo Land Two. I mean, I would be cool with Nintendo Land Two, or maybe like Wii Sports Deluxe. That'd yeah. Be cool. Resort, yeah, that'd be... resort, resort Deluxe. Yeah, I know a lot of people. They're like, I've never actually played that game, Wii Sports Resort. It apparently is like the bomb. Yeah, I, I feel like I need to like hunt down some copy of it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we should get back should on totally topic. Play it uh, there was a Perry. Pokemon Direct that just happened. Yeah, uh, it came out of nowhere, honestly. Yeah, like it a was couple like, days, it's another a couple one of those, like, before. they announce it the day before, and then suddenly it's just there. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people were predicting that we would see Pokemon Stars on Switch. Uh, I had. Uh, I was one of those. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I would have told you. I I thought there was no way we were getting that on Switch that early. I mean, like I knew I knew deep down it wasn't going to happen, but I yeah. there was a part of me that was like, maybe. 
I, I wanted it to, don't get me wrong, but uh, yeah, so instead, the big Pokemon game on Switch is Pokemon Tournament DX. Yeah, um, I can't remember. I feel like I saw this one coming. Um, well, there I might was a leak some- uh, just before that, like, some, some uh, third-party c- controller manufacturer was making, like, mentioned that the, uh, that their Pokemon fighting stick would work for it. Huh. Or that they were making one. I can't remember the exact leak, but I know I saw an article that the um the one that they released for the Wii U is compatible with the Switch. Hmm. Okay. Um I don't know if that's the same thing. I, I but, can't um, remember. I, I remember seeing it and I was like, yeah, I really don't care. <laughs> but uh yeah, so uh kind of like Mario Kart uh Mario Kart 8 Deluxe it's the same game, um, but they added a couple more fighters. Um, I think and five. I, I think so. That's a, that's a good amount of new fighters. Yeah, I, I thought the roster was a bit low in the first one. Yeah, I never actually got to play the uh, the first one, but it looks really good. Yeah, it does. Um, and they're getting rid of the asymmetrical local play, which was like the only way to play a two-player match locally on the Wii U was to have one person playing on the gamepad and one on the TV. Oh. Ugh. That's stupid. Yeah. I, I don't know why. Just to, to make your Wii U gamepad's battery die faster? Sure. <laughs> no, they uh, had to justify the, the, the gamepad's existence. <laughs> yeah, that was still during that era. Although, wait, that was just last year, wasn't it? Um, I think oh, they, shoot. like, 2016 was, like, the year they just gave up on Wii U. Yeah, it's really sad. Uh, so, what but, are your thoughts on Pokémon <laughs> Tournament DX? Um, so, I'm really, I'm excited about this. Um, I couldn't, for the life of you, uh, recite what the new characters are. I know Chandelure is an original character, but that's all I really know about it. Uh, Decidueye um, is the only like new one that I remember because like that was my, that was like my Pokémon starter from Sun. Is that the owl? Yeah, like the the fully evolved owl. Okay. Um. Do they have Garchomp, or am I imagining that? I I don't know. I like they showed off the new characters, and I was like, okay, like I somehow like when you just see new Pokemon revealed for anything, it's like weren't those already in there? Yeah, and also like I I remember thinking, as as they like unveiled each one. Like, why? Why this one, though? Yeah. Like, you like, have... Wh- <laughs> you have so many good Pokemon to work with. Yeah. Why like, those? Like, Gengar and and and, and Lucario, and, like, they're, they're all great. Chandelier is kind of weird, but I feel like it's a good kind of weird. Yeah. And then, I don't know, the rest... Like, why didn't they have... Uh, what is it, Rowleaf? Or no, no, no. Incineroar. Oh yeah, the, yeah. The fully fully evolved Litten. Yeah, I mean that looks like a wrestler. Yeah. So why not? Like that's the whole that's the whole thing. But maybe DLC? I don't know. Yeah. I mean they, they actually some uh, I think four of those characters are from the arcade version that they just never got around to putting in the Wii U game. Cuz I think Decidueye is the only new like actually new ver- one for this version. Okay. So these were, these were already planned for the game, but they just never made it made the cut. Yeah, like they're in okay. the arcade version, but good luck hunting one of those machines down. Uh. Oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot that this was like an arcade cabinet. Game. Yeah, yeah. That's actually like people were were really wanting it to come to Wii U because it came out in the arcades first. Hmm. So yeah, I mean, I think I think uh, Pokémon DX looks fun. Um, I think my only, the only thing I'm like not so happy with is its timing because it's coming out before all the big single player games, and I think I'm going to be tired of all these multiplayer games in a row. Yeah, um, and it feels like we've we've had nothing but uh, dozens upon dozens of different multiplayer games and. That's great yeah. and all, but I'm I'm looking forward to my single player experiences as well. 
Yeah, I am too. I, I want like another like big meaty uh, single player game. Which like if if Xenoblade Chronicles Two still comes out in the U.S. this year, which I'm calling that it won't. Um, yeah, I I mean because something like that is just too big of a game to to come out so soon after being announced this March. Yeah. So they're still saying that that's a 2017 game. Like they Nintendo just keep saying yes it is a 2017 game they seem we're, sure we're, about it we're I'm wading not. into into prediction territory yeah uh, but like that and like super mario odyssey like those are the big uh single player games but yeah this is this comes at, a, at the end of a string of uh very much local multiplayer focused games like mario kart 8 uh arms splatoon 2 yeah i think um it's just it, it feels tiring right now, but I think in the long run of the console's lifespan, stuff like this is really going to add up to, like, a phenomenal overall experience. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. It's just, like, the, the pains of being a early adopter, I guess. Yeah. So, Having like, like if, if we had waited until, like, next year, we would have had games like Minecraft, Skyrim, Legend of Zelda, Super Mario, uh, Odyssey. Fire Emblem like, Warriors. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> uh, I know like, you're like absolutely not excited at all for that game. Oh boy, I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am for that game. <laughs> uh, so I guess uh, like the Fire next... Emblem Dancing All Night. <laughs> oh wait, they already did that. That's actually a thing. Wait, what? Yeah, so they did like a Persona 4 Dancing All Night. Yeah. And they had Fire Emblem characters in it. They did? Yeah. Oh no. I'm like, not even they, joking. What are they doing to that franchise? I don't know. Cuz like they just released the uh like Bridal Blessings DLC for Fire Emblem Heroes. I don't know. I think it's just cuz it's an anime. It's basic it's just an anime. Yeah, but it didn't with, used to be like strate- this though. With RPG ele- it's an anime with RPG elements. Yeah. <laughs> versus an RPG with anime elements. <laughs> Uh, uh, so the, the next big reveal that they had was Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, mm-hmm. which are coming out this November on 3DS. So this is what was prob- what probably would have been Pokemon Stars. Um, I, I will be honest, when this first announced, I was, I was a little disappointed and confused uh, just because... I don't know. It feels like it's come out too soon after Sun and Moon. Um, but I saw some people talking about it online and comparing it to like Black and White 2. And so I think from that perspective, this this could be could be viewed as like an extension of the game. So they were like remixed towns and and uh, gyms, more Pokemon and more more stuff to do. Yeah, the confusing element comes in because they said that this is a alternate story. So it's not a sequel, but it's like it's like a what if, I guess. Mm-hmm. So it's set in the same world. It has the same legendaries just merged with whatever that polygon thing is. Um but yeah, it's not it's not a direct sequel like uh Black White and like Black and White 2. Hmm. I th- maybe a similar idea then yeah because like i feel like they spent a long time developing this this new this new region um especially now that i think about it um because this is where they introduced region specific pokemon i see i think this is a great opportunity for them to introduce even more yeah and i'd like to see some like gen 2 uh versions because they only did that with the gen 1 pokemon Mm mm-hmm so maybe maybe they do the next gen through this with the region. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. It could be cool. I'm just I'm not I'm not sold on it yet. I'm just yeah, gonna wait I feel for like, E3. Yeah, I feel like we need to see more more gameplay. And I'm uh, sure they'll do a Treehouse Live on this. Mm-hmm. Also, maybe it's just me, but did it seem like the resolution in the games was a little higher than than usual? I mean, it looked a little cleaner and more colorful. Mm-hmm. Could be they're just using a new filter. Maybe. 
I mean, I thought the sun and moon looked really good, so. Yeah, but it's just like once you if if you if you think about it too hard, like you can you could definitely like you definitely notice the 3DS's resolution. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard not it's hard not to see once you once it's 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 hard to unsee. Yeah. Like if, if you're engrossed in a game, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh so are you interested in these? Because you did not play uh Sun and Moon. Uh I feel like I would still want to play either Sun or Moon before diving into one of these. Unless mm. unless it turns out that these are a standalone experience and I don't need to have played the others. Okay, so if it were, you would be more tempted by these. I probably would jump on board with one of these if it turns out to be self-contained. Okay. Which it might be if it's an alternate version of the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yet another 3DS game that I, th- I would have rather have been on Switch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure... I don't know. I'm sure it'll just be a matter of time before they start. Although, no, well... See, here's the thing, though. Because the, the 3DS is... It really feels like they're they're trying to stay stay on track with with this. Like they're real, they're they're still actively supporting and developing for it. They're coming out with these these big games like Fire Emblem Echoes and uh, Warriors. Hey Pikmin. Hey and hey Pik and hey Pikmin. And can't can't forget Metopia, which I'm still very excited about. I I always forget about that game. You're like the, I was listening to the music the, uh, for it the other day because it was been out in Japan. Yeah. Um and. It it's very good music. I'll have to listen to it. The, like the battle theme sounds a little Final Fantasy esque, mm-hmm. like classic, like Final yeah. Fantasy one. <coughs> yeah, I'm I'm very excited to play it. I've been like purposefully tr- avoiding watching any footage of the game just because I want to uh, experience all the weirdness firsthand. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a crazy game. I'm not like super excited, but like that's a totally that's totally like a Charles game. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, but if I'm if I'm able to set up my 3DS for uh, video feed, um, then we can absolutely play that. So we will have to play that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the final announcement was that Silver and Gold are coming out on 3DS Virtual Console. I'm okay with that. I think that's cool. Yeah, it's got the uh, Pokemon Bank thing, so you can, you know, put your Pokemon in there, so you can export the Gen Two that you catch in this yeah. game to your new Ultra Moon and Ultra Sun. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. I th- yeah, I think it's really neat that they they're porting these older games, so they're giving players a way to to bring their bring their old poke in, in a way not not like literally but in in some way they're able to bring those old pokemon all the way to the yeah. current games and i think well if you think cool. about it like now if you have a 3ds you can now like catch every generation and like have them in any game that you well like any of the newer games because like That's now true. you have the first two gens you have the remakes of ruby and sapphire and all the DS games can be uh, ported up, and I think black and white still use the bank. I think so, yeah. So as as long as you get your like diamond and pearl Pokemon into uh, black and white, you can still port those over. Yeah, don't you? Isn't there cool. like a there's like a small like a achievement or something like there's there's a note put on your your badge for um, for transporting one all across the ages. Is there? <laughs> I think so. There, there's some, in one of the games. There's it might be in. It's either X Y or or uh, Omega Ruby's Alpha Sapphire. Hmm. Well, hopefully they've made like some way for the Switch to connect to the 3DS, so you can like continue to bring these forward. I mean, if they just if they just make the 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 bank uh, yeah, Switch I guess app, that's true. then 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 that'll work. But yeah, I think I I don't know. I think that's really cool. Basically, if you have a 3DS, you have the best Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, you literally have every generation that you can play. Uh so, oh, I I meant to mention there was a trailer this week for the Super Nintendo World. 
So, what do you think? I'm not sure what I think, honestly. Really? Yeah. It huh. didn't really... It doesn't really show off much about, like, what the park is. It's more of, like, a... More of a hype trailer than anything. Well, yeah, I mean, like, they, they just did the groundbreaking ceremony for it in Japan. Mm. So they're, they're just now, like... So this is more to establish what... Hey, this is the vision we have. Yeah, because it's not going to be... Like, this park won't open for another, like, two and a half, three years. I, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. We have to get we have to get that floating coin technology somehow, and it's going to take <laughs> a little bit of time. Yeah, so, like, all of that stuff, though, is planned to be in the park. So, like, the mm-hmm. coins will be rotating at all times... Okay. That's neat. And so they have confirmed a Mario Kart ride. Yeah, I don't know any details about that. What did they release any, or did they just say no? They one? just said they're using state of the art technology. State of the art. Okay. All so, right. uh, that could mean something with VR. Uh, I think that to work properly, I feel like augmented reality would be uh yeah, probably that, I mean, a better is, fit. That is state of the art. It's also incredibly expensive. Right. But I mean, they've got two and a half, three years to to Yeah, that's true. To raise it to raise that 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 money, so I think uh, so yeah. So right now it's all like Super Mario stuff, but then they're gonna be mm-hmm. like expanding like they're gonna be doing supposedly a Donkey Kong section as well, and who knows from there. The way they that Universal typically does their parks is like when they open these uh, lands is that they'll like start smaller and then kind of build off of that. Okay, so, so there there'll be well, like Mario, maybe a little bit of Donkey Kong, and uh, oh, ooh, how cool would it be to walk through an actual Luigi's Mansion? That would be so neat. Oh, or have I like a this. I want that more than anything. <laughs> or like a giant ball orb. Yeah, like in a in a Pikmin area. Mm hmm. That would be really neat. Yeah, so they're kind of starting off with, like, you need Mario to be your foundation. Right. Well, the face of Mario. I mean, yeah. Nintendo. I wonder if, like, I wonder if they'll ever team up with, like, the Pokemon company and do a Pokemon section. Because you know that will attract everyone. <laughs> yeah. You can see if, Pokemon, uh, get, if we can get Pokemon to go to the park. <laughs> wow. Um... Maybe they'll yeah. be releasing Pokemon Go 2 by that time. <laughs> Side note, you know what's really interesting is um, as as these like Pokemon games are coming out, just like the kind of the disconnect from like, of Pokemon from Nintendo is really really interesting because I've always thought of Pokemon being a Nintendo license, mm-hmm. and it's just really weird seeing this. This character that I've associated so strongly, or the, the this franchise, um, I'm, I say character, and I'm thinking Pikachu. But to I see, thought you were thinking of Brock. Po- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you think Pokemon? What's the first thing you think of? Brock. <laughs> Squint those good old squinty eyes. Rock Pokemon. Right. Um, Brock. Rock. <gasps> it all makes sense. <laughs> no, <laughs> but um, what I'm saying is. Uh, like you, you grow up and you think Pokemon, Nintendo. You know, Pokemon is in Smash Brothers. It's in. You, you, it's you very, very strongly associated with them, but at the same time, they're very much their own thing, and that's kind of weird. Yeah. Like sometimes I feel like like Nintendo needs to step in more for some of their like worse ideas. Uh, mm-hmm. But then other times I'm kind of glad with some of the weird decisions Nintendo makes. What do you think Nintendo would do if they had um, more direct involvement with the the franchise? See, that's what I don't know. Like with the with Kimishima as the new president, I'm like I still don't really know his style yet. The way that like Iwata had like a very like the, his era felt very um, distinct. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of still. Well, see, Iwata had very much had a presence with everything that came out of Nintendo. Right. Like, you, you could, you could like, feel his influence in almost everything that was released. Well, and there was that time that he and Reggie fought at E3. Yeah. So. That, that, that iconic uh, moment. Yeah. 
but seriously did, though, that like that was a really cool trailer. It really was. They did a, like their their past uh, directs have had some really cool stuff. Like for E three, the robot chicken year. Mm hmm. That was a lot of fun. And then the the um, the the rest in peace Star Fox year, yeah. uh, where they did the puppets. Yeah. So we're kind of like hinting around E3. Yeah. Do you want to like just get right into it? Let's just to wrap up the I episode. I mean, we've pretty much talked talked about everything, right? Yeah, like all the big stuff. Let's talk about E3. Um, it's gonna be cool, I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what to expect from anyone else, but um, what what is what are you, kind of your predictions? Like, what what do you think is most likely for Nintendo? And I'm gonna say. Of course, it's Super Mario Odyssey. There, as as a spotlight, they like they've announced that, so we're all we're all expecting that. Mm-hmm. But what do you think is um, like? What else do you think is going to be kind of the big, the big? What do you think is going to be the the second the biggest announcement? Uh, I think they're going to show off Fire Emblem Warriors. <laughs> you just like to keep dragging that up. <laughs> um. I'm I'm really not sure now. Like I know there's all the rumors that we're gonna see Animal Crossing, and I'm trying not to think about that because it's gonna make me too excited. Um, like that and Pikmin Four. I just feel like neither of those games are gonna be there, but I really want them to. So I'm like mm-hmm. trying to I'm trying to like hold myself back, rein myself in from getting too excited. I don't think we're gonna see Metroid though. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um. I mean, I, I I honestly agree. Um, there's there are too there's too many there like. Gosh, I really don't know what, like what I'm what I'm trying to say. Like I, yeah. I agree with you. Um, and as much as I want stuff like Animal Crossing or Pikmin Four, I feel like odds are we're probably not going to hear about it. But at the same time, like I have this sort of like gut feeling that we're going to hear something. Even I think there's going to be something something big, but, like, what you're trying... I think, like, the issue that you were having is, like, there's so many big projects they could announce mm-hmm. that it's hard to pinpoint, like, what the next one is going to be. Right. Because they're kind of in this weird phase where they've just announced this big new console, and there it's been a while since so many of their franchises, so many of their IPs, have had a, a substantial release... Star Fox. You know, stuff, stuff. <laughs> Rest in peace. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that that franchise, Chibi Robo and and Star Fox are dead. That's the one thing we learned from last last generation. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but st- stuff like like Metroid, like fans have been like begging for something. They ins- absolutely could announce anything. Then at the same time, they probably won't even mention it once. That that's like the weird thing about covering Nintendo stuff. It's just so hard to predict what they'll do. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say, I think, I think we will see Retro Studios new game. I think it's going to be a new IP. Like Nintendo is very focused on getting new franchises out there for their new hardware, mm-hmm. and I think it's going to be a new IP. So I don't think yeah. it's going to be Donkey Kong. That doesn't make sense. Uh, those games sell well, but not a ton. And right. they've already kind of said that like. You know, if we were making Metroid Prime Four, it wouldn't be out for quite some time. Like they kind of yeah. made made it sound like they weren't actively working on one, and that was like a year ago. So, yeah, um, I will say this: uh, if if Metroid is dead and gone, then assuming that Retro Studios comes out with something similar, like s- following in the sort of footsteps of the Prime series, yeah. But just without the Metroid, they could totally do our bounty hunter idea that we came up with, mm-hmm. like spacefaring open world bounty hunting. I think that would yeah. be amazing. I just so don't. I, I don't want it to be a multiplayer focused thing. That's my one. Like we're getting enough of those, and that's really cool. But right. But I feel like I could. I could accept the passing of Metroid if we received something that sort of took up its mantle 
Yeah, I mean, like, it just seems weird that Nintendo would even make a new entry in the franchise, like Federation Force, after that right. long, and just, like, have it be a weird spin-off. Like, why even make a new entry if that if you're going to, like, kill off a franchise? Yeah, it just, it doesn't make sense. And they made such a big deal about it as well. Like, it was, it was the next big entry in, in, this, in the series, but it, it just isn't. Yeah, you Not played it. Not a little it, bit. <laughs> Um. Yeah, did I, ever I don't. Give that back to you, by the way. Yeah, you did. Okay. Because you played like three missions, and then like like a couple months later, I asked you, "Is like, are you ever gonna play this?" And you're like, "No, <laughs> you can take it back." <laughs> um, I'm not sure about Smash Switch. Like, it's gonna happen, but I'm not sure yeah. if it's this year. I don't think we're. If they announce it, I feel like we would probably get like a 2018 or 2019. Yeah, because like we're gonna get something. There's going to be, like, an inkling in this game, right? Yeah. Like, if they add new characters, it's going to be inkling. Yeah, and fingers crossed, uh, as always, for Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe one of the ARMS characters? Oh, I mean, yeah, they're, definitely. They're, they're literally from a fighting game. Definitely, though. Um, I will say this. If they do announce Smash, then my, uh, my big-ticket item for that is single-player campaign. Because... Um, my I, like, I love Brawl. A lot of people don't like it, and they can have their opinion. I really liked it, and I my favorite, too. my favorite aspect of it was the subspace emissary, which a lot of people didn't. Well, a lot of people didn't like how it ended with that yeah. the, the the great maze. Yeah, yeah. But no, I totally I, agree with you, though. Yeah. So that that was my biggest disappointment for the newest Smash Brothers was that there wasn't anything like that. And as someone who, like, I don't have a lot of people to play cooperatively with, like, that, I I was super disappointed that there wasn't, like, anything at all like that. Yeah. The the 3DS version is just, like, it, it was a lot harder to get into. Mm -hmm. Just because, like, you'd have to have, like, your friends bring their 3DSs and their copies of the game. So, I mean, like, I know the 3DS version sold a bunch of copies, like, way more than the Wii U version did, but I think bringing this to Switch is a great idea because most people, like, even though they played the 3DS version, that was, like, easily the more inferior version. Yeah. I feel like the, the Switch could be the... It could bring kind of bring both versions together. They need to have all the stages, though, from both games. Yes. Like, I'm actually fine with the roster the way it is, particularly particularly with the DLC characters they added. Mm -hmm. um, but the, I, I just wanted more stages in the Wii U version. Like, there's a lot of stages in the 3DS version that, like, when I go back to it occasionally, I'll be like, oh, wow, I forgot, like, they had these amazing stages in there because yeah. I never played that version. Right. So I feel I, mean, I forget it has it has some some good stages in it, and because I never play it, and that's the yeah. only version I have. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think we're gonna see. I don't know. Like I th I feel like that one's kind of fifty fifty, as to whether or not we'll see it. I just think given their like push with, uh, with Arms, Splatoon two, and Pokin at this E three, I think we're not gonna see it. Yeah. I and I kind of, kind of something we touched on earlier is that there's, there's been so many, so many multiplayer games. I feel like the focus is, they're going to touch on that. I feel like, and I'm really hoping that the focus is on single player experiences. Yeah, like, no, but I mean, because the spotlight of the show is uh, Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah. So I feel like uh, having more things. In like in that same vein, you know, very much a single player ex uh, experience would would fit would fit more thematically. Yeah, I also just remembered we're getting a new Kirby game this year. Remember the unannounced 3DS multiplayer Kirby game? Oh heck, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think forgot. everyone's forgotten about that game. Oh boy, yeah. Like, that's actually kind of cool. I'm actually Holy excited to gosh. see what they... Yeah, we're definitely <laughs> going to hear about it. Yeah, it's, it's set to come out this year, so... 
Because this is the, what, 25th or 30th? Yeah. No, 25th. Yeah, so that, that should be interesting. I do think the... I don't remember what it's called. What's the Kirby 3D game that they're... That, like, deluxe thing that they're releasing? Blowout Blast? Is that the... Something like that. I think that's yeah, going to be one like of those that. games where they go, and it's available right now. I think it's going to come yeah. out the day it's of the conference. It's available in the eShop right yeah. now. That's my prediction. I feel that's pretty safe. Uh, so do you have any other like crazy predictions? Crazy predictions? Um... Hmm. Rhythm Heaven 4. Uh, my craziest prediction is Metroid. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so great if we got a new Rhythm Heaven, though. I that I mean, like I'm I'm down. I'm out, so I'm absolutely down for a new Rhythm Heaven. But I don't think it's very likely because they just came out with Mega Mix. Yeah, I mean that's not a new game to be fair. Which is almost like the definitive the, the definitive uh version of the game. Yeah, it is. Or of the series. Um but it was only like a one quarter new content. Although it did technically like remix a lot of them. It was a lot easier. I went back and like I played uh Fever after Mega Mix and some of those games they took from that are mm-hmm. way harder in the Wii version. Oh, they're so good, though. Yeah, they are. The I think Fever is the best in the series. Man, I love, I love Fever. It's so good. Rhythm Heaven is just so good. Yeah. So I'm trying to think, like, what else we might possibly see. Um, I mean, we could see the new Fire Emblem, that's coming out next year. Mm-hmm. If they do, it's like it would be like a very short trailer. And that was supposed to be the the mystery one that they just announced they were making a new Fire Emblem. Yeah, and they made sure to tell us like it was the next entry. It wasn't like a spinoff. It wasn't Warriors. It was like a completely. It was like the sequel or, or continuing the series from Fates. Mm-hmm. So. So they're probably gonna throw more anime stuff in there. Probably. Uh, speaking of anime, uh, do, what do you think are the odds we'll hear more about Shin Megami Tensei? Oh yeah, I, f- I forgot that was a thing. Uh, I think I think we'll see something because like they they had the trailer in March. It was all mm-hmm. like a CG trailer. Um, I think we'll see it. I'm going to predict <clears throat> an early 2018 release. I think it okay. skips this year. I'm. I almost feel like they probably... It's probably going to... Just because it took so long for Persona 5 to come out, I feel like... I feel like this is going to be one of those those titles that gets delayed and delayed and delayed. And when it comes out, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, it could be. I don't know how long they took with 4, um, because this is technically a different series. And I guess, I guess Persona has actually become more popular. Mm-hmm. It might just be that Persona is is more of like a... a, a, I want to say it's more accessible. Like, I don't know too much about about either series, but just from what I do know, Persona is probably a little more consumer-friendly. Yeah, I I haven't played either. Like, I keep meaning to, but then I forget about it. Yeah. Yeah, so... um, I don't know. Intelligent Systems has enough different games in development. Like, they're a big enough thing. They could have a couple of different games. So maybe we do see WarioWare. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like that could be something they kind of, you know, pump out by the end of this year. No. What, what, about, what about Paper Mario? Thousand Year uh, Door. <laughs> HD Remaster. Nintendo Switch. I'm going to say it's not happening. I mean, because I, I don't want to get any hopes up. I'm going to label that one as my my craziest uh, wish. Yeah, that would that would be great. Um, it would it would make me even happier though if they announced that they were actually listening to the fans and fixing the overall series going forward. Mm-hmm. 
because I really don't want Color Splash to be the last game in the series. Yeah. But I wouldn't mind it so much if they continued to make Sticker Star based games. Mm. I have to be careful around you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like it, it's fine. Like I understand. Like I, I perfectly agree with with uh, everyone's re- like um, everyone's reasons for not liking the game. Okay. It's just that, like they're they're like for whatever reason there are things that I adore about it. Hmm. Yeah, I, I can't go there with you, but <laughs> like it's it's, and this is something that I really need to I need to like sit down and I need to like put down on paper why ex- like what exactly my feelings are about this game because like I very much I I really enjoy it. But I need to like write down what it is exactly that makes me enjoy it so much when there's so much to not like about it. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess the, the fourth and final series that Intelligent Series does is uh, Advance Wars, which I don't think we're going to be seeing a new entry of. Probably not, although we might... We're probably going to hear more about the, um, the uh, indie Wargroove? title that was announced. Yeah. Yeah, that actually looks pretty fun. Yeah, I feel like we're going to hear more about indie titles that have been announced, um, uh, as well as uh, we're, we'll hear about an influx of new titles. Yeah, I think because I, they just announced that they're... I think the spotlight's going to be a half hour, which is a little short. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, so maybe if they do indie stuff, it might be like a sizzle reel. Yeah. Like a and and to to finish things off, here's a here's a look a, a quick look at some other stuff we've been working on, and then you've got the that pumping up beat music with a bunch of different footage. Yeah. What if at the end they do a sizzle reel and they don't announce a new Metroid, but then they just show like this HD Samus at the end? No, no, and, no, like, no, that's no, how no, it no, ends. no, no, no. Here, I'll paint you an even bigger picture. The screen fades to black, and then you hear. That that little chirp, <laughs> and then you see those like three glowing dots, kind of like slowly fade in, and you see that Metroid egg. And then like like they're all wearing Metroid pins, like all the reps, mm-hmm. and no one ever talks about it the entire day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like <Ooh. laughs> what if they do that? That would be so messed up. So, 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 what can you tell us about the new Metroid game? We're not, uh, we're not, we're not announcing any Metroid news at this time. Yeah. Wait, what's a Metroid? As like he has one pinned on his, on his <laughs> who's, shirt. Who's who's Metroid? Oh yeah, he's the guy from from, from Space Game. <laughs> I pretty from, from can't sp- crawl. <laughs> Why can't Metroid crawl? <laughs> All right, so I think that just about does it for our show. We're starting oh, to get if they like, the if they announced if they did announce it like they that's how they ended it, and then like you see the like the 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 three dots inside the Metroid just kind of like slowly illuminate, and you hear that chirping noise. Oh and, and boy, a, a date pops up, and it's like twenty XX. Mm, oh no! Oh no! No no! <laughs> see, you keep you keep trying to like p- take my my. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, I have this the optimistic painting, and then you, you come just, with your pessimism paint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're you're mean. Sorry, I can't help but think like Nintendo does stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like well, like, and I mean they did that mean. with they did that with Mother Three during during the Robot Chicken E Three. Yeah, yeah, like one of the fans is like. Uh, what is it, like? What about Mother Three? And then Reggie just eats a fire flower and burns him. So yeah, I mean that. When you put it like that, there's absolutely something that they would do. Yeah, we should we should do. Uh, you should totally draw another one of those um, bingo boards. Yeah, if you have I think time. I'm gonna I'm gonna work on one. Oh, I'm I think I tried not to have as much like hardware related stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll do, maybe I'll do one too, but I I don't have the artistic talent. I'll just write what it, like words in there. I just I just did that because I was I was bored and I was yeah. at work. Yeah, you put a lot of detail into that. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> 
All right, so that was our show for this week. Yes, thanks you so much for listening. Tune in next time to hear us say, you heard it here, boys. <laughs> well, next uh, next one is going to be fun because we'll actually be talking about what they announce. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, it's it's Tuesday. I can't wait till it. Yeah. I can't I can't wait. Like I'm off that day and I get to I get to see it all happen. Yeah, we'll we'll totally be messaging back and forth. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh so check out our Quadratics channel Quadratics gaming channel. Uh we just posted uh you weren't in on this one, but you might be for the next one. Um we did a crossover with the Borden Bros, Isaac and I and yeah we played mario kart 8 deluxe the loser had to eat very very hot wings from buffalo wild wings don't spoil don't spoil it in the video but someone yeah so somebody had to eat those someone on quadratics and you weren't there and uh, yeah um <laughs> yeah, don't, <laughs> you may, don't spoil maybe... it for the folks at home Maybe you you were glad that you didn't make it to this one. <laughs> maybe, just maybe. All right. Well, uh, that was our show for this week. Except I would have totally rocked at it because I'm so good at Mario Kart. <laughs> Actually, you are really good at Mario Kart. I'm. I'm I mean, I'm. A... Listen, I. I do. Oh, oh, okay. I'm not very good at 200 CC. Well, I'm not either. So. Well, I'm just saying I can't I can't be considered like a pro or anything. Okay. All right, we should actually wrap this up now. <laughs> uh, I'm Zach Tussing. I'm Charles Fillmore. And this has been QGP. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>